Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Dice Cult for episode 173 of On the Backs of Gods. I am your DM, Jillian, and we have our players today. Same as always, we have Kyle, Matt, Katie, Josh, and Greg. Uh, it's been a minute. How are you? We're good. Everybody here is having a really good time in the woods or in a really comfy, warm bed in a nice little cottage, you know? So really, I think everybody's having a good time. Uh, but you know, I think we can just jump into things. I'll give a quick recap, mostly for my own sake. Uh, last time, the party had split as the effects of the brushwood became too aggressive um, for two of the party members. One of them affected by this uh, oppressive energy, and one of them affected by the fact that they just could not sleep. And we're causing the party to move at a near unbearable crawl and it is apparent that the longer you spend in these woods the less likely you're coming back out and after some um some stern positioning from keld and nix roshan and nana were asked to step through a tree go back home recuperate grab some jars <laughs> and then come back um and both of them eventually agreed and um, Fen remains with the group, scratching his skin raw, like, awesome. <laughs> um, so the uh, Nana and Roshan make their way back to be greeted by Keldon Nix's parents and Russ, who you guys quickly inform, as you can see, that they are afraid because everybody else is not back. Um, that the, everyone's fine, but you guys needed time to recuperate. To which Russ immediately says, call Nix. I'm going to the woods. There's there, there's no in-between for that for me. Um, and we all and, made sure he got his coat and his boots and his water. Yeah. And he got his supplies, which if somebody had not stated it to him, he would not have. Um, and a basically a phone call was made to Nix, who opened a tree and Russ joins the party in the woods and he's immediately like it feels bad here because he kind of jumped it in jump it did jumped into the deep end instead of how you guys kind of progressively got further into the forest he just sort of running left into one of the worst sections of it um but was like listen i'll be here for just a bit till everybody else recuperates i'll take on some of the burdens and then i'll go home and rest like he's like let me be just, I'll take on some burdens for a minute and then I can just go vibe. And that's what he did as he would do all of the perception checks as you all progressed through the woods where you were uh, accosted by trees and just the the nature of the place in general, including um, some more sentient smaller trees and a terrible monster of bones and flower um, but those were easily felled by this team who could not be slowed down, um, as they continue to march forward and Fen feeling these worms squirming beneath his skin begins to see moss growing upon his wounds and quickly tries to brush them away as he tries to continue onwards with his friends through the forest. And Roshan, back at home, has his Britney moment and now has no hair on he head. And I guess good for good for him, bad for him. It's none of my business, really. <laughs> Girl, whatever you want. <laughs> none of my business. Um, and um, you guys take some time to try to relax, try to recuperate, because the faster you recuperate, the faster you can get back to your friends. Uh, and... Roshan, uh, after having this moment of, uh, I suppose, liberation, need for control, sorrow, whatever was fueling that moment, eventually goes and talks to the ladle, who is Keldon Nix's mother, but also the spiritual leader of the community. And she spoke to Roshan about his addiction that he still carries with him and the choices that he has made and the way that he feels and Gladel tried to instill as much wisdom as she could. And that night, Roshan and Nana were both able to sleep. 
while the rest of the party slept in the woods, blindfolded, no bubble to protect them as something, that thing that had been following, that thing that scrapes across the ground in pursuit, was able to touch them and be close to them. And we're going to start off with Team Woods. Kel, you start off where you left off. It is darkness. It is becoming apparent to you that you cannot breathe, but the darkness stretches out before you. What do you do? Hmm. Am I feeling... I guess I'm going to focus on trying to breathe. <laughs> There's no light anywhere. At this moment, you don't see any light, and as you try to kind of take in breath, you realize it's the same sensation from your other dream, from when you were mm. drowning. But this time you do not see the ice above you. You are just in the expanse of darkness that you chose to look see. at. <laughs> I... Since it's just darkness, I guess he'll uh, try to focus on his friends and his sister and things that, you know, bring a little light to life. Okay. Some things begin to take shape as you ground yourself, as you hold your breath. You can see the outline of trees, an unending forest splayed in blacks and grays before you. Uh, and you can see a path forward. It is gnarled and twisted, but you can see a way forward. You pursue? Yes. Okay. It is half walking, half swimming. It's like moving their molasses, but you push forward. Out of the corners of your eyes and your periphery, flashes of white, bright white round eyes. But each time you turn to look at them, there's nothing to be seen. And as you turn your head back forward, before you, many hands, Eclipsed in shadow, reach for you. And they invite you forward. Do you accept this invitation? Do you reach out? No, I think I'm just going to observe them. You watch one draining, reaching. And then there's some slack that comes to it. And it grips the tree next to it. On the far side, another one grips the tree, digging into the bark, the scrape of nails on wood as you watch all of them grab and begin to pull the forest forward. Fen. As you sit there, waiting for the sun to fully rise, being perfectly sure that you can feel just a hint of warmth, you know that you're close. You know it's close to time. You hear the rustle of somebody moving. One of your companions, it seems, is like getting up. And they stand up and you hear footsteps just for a moment. And then you hear the sound of soft jingling bells and little bits of metal as something has bumped into the perimeter. Am I able to 
determine where something has triggered that like yeah approximately where and does it seem like where somebody was shuffling within the group like in that same direction i would say because this is a pretty small area yeah you think that those two things line up ben's gonna try to feel his way to whoever that might be and like just I imagine we're all close so he's going to try and feel around for who might have gotten up <laughs> next there's a hand that like <laughs> taps across your face and then you hear something impact into Russ and it's like alright <laughs> those two um, you can't feel killed you're pretty sure you can't feel killed Held? Are you there? Held. You are standing up. It is dark. It is cold. And you are standing there, unable to see. Mm. What do you do? Did I was I able to hear Finn? You something caught your something. attention. Something. Yeah. Something caught your attention. Okay. <laughs> I think, I mean, it'll take a minute to, like, see if he's back to reality or this weird darkness. <laughs> so you take, um, like, stock of yourself is what yeah. you're saying. You kind of, like, touch at your body and then reach towards your face. You have your blindfold on. <laughs> that is the darkness that you are mm -hmm. are observing. <laughs> Eld, if you have to pee, just make sure you're downhill of the rest of us, please. Uh, you can... Russ sort of, like, leans over to Nyx. Can I take the blindfold off now? And you guys are kind of in that, like, it's towing the line, but it's certainly... We're, like, in mourning. Uh, it'd be... It'd be like, <laughs> yeah, we're on the edge, perhaps, but yeah, I think it is Kel's definitely just, like. Morning. Slowly turn Just back the towards everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and come um, back and sit with the group. <laughs> yeah. Um, after Keld can, does that and realizes he is not immediately throttled by something, um, everybody else is able to safely take off their blindfolds and go about preparing for the morning. Uh, Russ <laughs> gets up and, like, puts some jerky in his mouth and then goes over to, like, the nearest tree and starts, like, doing pull-ups, his morning routine. Mm -hmm. So Good. he's off doing that, just, like, about five feet away. He's not far. Um, but let's talk about how everybody's doing, shall we? Mm -hmm. let's, let's see how everybody's doing. Held. You have zero levels of corruption and your DC has reset. So you rolled earlier. It was at a five. Now it is past that. So instead of having to roll something higher than that when you first woke up, you got to roll a five to maintain mm. your, your psyche. Nyx, same situation. Then once you fully wake up, you are still kind of picking and scratching at your skin. But when you look at it, you do not see any of that moss. None of the moss is there. And you're like, now you're like, was it ever there? Because you can't, it's almost like you can't envision it on your skin anymore. But your skin is still being picked and prodded and scratched. Uh, you are at... Uh, two levels of corruption and your dc level has reset so you still have the nausea and the sensation of un something under the skin but the moss is gone uh, and russ is currently doing pull-ups what would we like to do this fine morning held will happily talk about his weird dream <laughs> held described his dream to the group 
Was it a dream or was that just what you were imagining you were seeing under the blindfold? Because you were awake. See, I'm not sure. It's been really hard to tell when I'm awake and when I'm asleep. Because, like, I saw those same eyes when I was awake without the blindfold. Hmm? So. Huh. When was that? A couple days. It was one of the days. We've been here so long. <laughs> it's all blurring together. Vic's going to start looking at every person to try to gauge how they're doing. Yeah, go ahead and roll me insight, Nix. Um, okay. I feel like Keld or Keld, are you helping? Are you part of this this lineup? Uh, I'll help, even though he's a little concerned that he's unwell. <laughs> he's like, he's like, am I unwell? Maybe, um, but I'll help. Uh, and Nix, you can roll with advantage. Yeah. Keld's like, I don't know. Look at me, please. <laughs> Perceive me, but me too. Wow. Well, hey, also, high. I'm gonna get in the lineup. <laughs> Twenty five. That's pretty good. Um, um, anybody that feels like they'd like to roll deception to look better than they feel is welcome to. Um, Curious. Um, ben got a five. Neat. Uh, Fen is... <laughs> Okay, here's what you're looking oh, at. No. <laughs> well, oh no, Fen's, Fen's picking up his alarm. His he's rolling up oh, twine and at the same know. time scratching his arm. <laughs> yeah, and it's really just like kind of in the back of your mind too, where it's like you feel this squirming and you're like, "Well, I gotta do something about it." And it's just become kind of like offhand. Um, Fen is still actively clawing at his skin. Um, is actively taking apart the alarm and going about his business, but like. You can see the the scratches there and that he is still actively doing that, but he's going about his business. Russ is um, doing pull-ups and eating jerky. And this seems like what just Russ does. Russ is presenting not terribly. And killed. <laughs> You don't think it's hard for you to pinpoint it because you're like, you could see it with Nana and you can see it with Fen. You can see it like so viscerally and you're like, it's not the same thing. Whatever is happening to Keld is not the same thing. But Keld does not seem altered in any way. He is just being... He is perceiving things either in dream or behind eyelid, but in you're here. not picking up. He's just <laughs> by him somewhere in there, but you're not perceiving that he's like, you know, affected by the forest as negatively as other people are. She's going to relay everything to Kel that she saw. <laughs> I can't tell if Russ is, oh, you know, he always acts okay. <laughs> really good at <laughs> can i incite russ sure you can incite russ everybody's staring really hard at russ <laughs> we're just recounting he's all like please stop <laughs> I stop it God. making me self-conscious <laughs> stop it <laughs> uh, i got a 21 <laughs> i mean you're picking up the the same thing as nix is that he's performing a morning routine and does not seem Performing. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to send him back. <laughs> Eating jerky, huh? <laughs> um, he does make a food. comment, like casually offhand, where he's just like, like just casually talking to people and being like, "This is so much easier without armor," and says that Brynja, yeah. when they do this makes him like wear parts of his armor when they do like their morning uh like workout so he's like this is this is so much easier this is nothing <laughs> this is this ain't nothing um but this is what you're presented with as you can gather breakfast and start art keld you can start putting your armor on yeah. um is there anything you guys want to do before trekking forward and if not who's who's leading who's doing things you know we'll check for plants 
-hmm. while okay. eating. Yeah, you go ahead and cast this spell to see if you can locate this uh, water crimson that you are trying to find for Calendula, and maybe for yourselves, you might get a little prize out of it. Um, it's not coming up, but just like, it's almost like when you get like, like the hairs stand up a little bit on the back of your neck, but it you are not able to pinpoint a direction at this time. All right. Keep your secrets then. <laughs> Next break. Next time. Every break. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think we just keep going the way we were. I think Plants so. Plants not in this area yet. Like maybe if we just get a little further, then I can ping it. Maybe. We, we'll just keep trying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. And... I'll keep doing what I'm doing. I'll keep the lookout. And then I would assume maybe tap out tomorrow. Be we'll, careful we'll, with the looking out. Uh, we'll see how you're doing tonight. Sure. Ben, are you okay? I think you're still oh, yeah, I'm very itchy. Yeah. I think I've got some Everybody. poison ivy or something, but I'm I'm fine. It's won't be the first mm. time I've touched something I wasn't supposed to. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Not poison ivy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Kel, do you want to lead or should I? One of us. I, I'll lead. Okay. Uh, Russ sort of like stretches a little bit and like, like, you know, kind of like cracks his back and like just sort of loosens up. Mm. And Kel, you're leaning. You're, you're leaning. You're leading. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm going to put okay. Russ right next to him for saving throws <laughs> so he All feels right. better. Man, the amount of auras in this place. <laughs> so many auras. <laughs> I don't know if Russ actually has an aura. Um, <laughs> you got an aura, bud? You too? You got an aura, my man? I don't think you have enough levels in that for an aura. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think he has an aura. Um, Big aura is at six. <clears throat> no, certainly not. Uh, <laughs> He's only certainly. baby paladin. He's just a little paladin, not a big paladin. Uh, <laughs> his other levels. Anywho, um, you guys begin your way out. Keld, you are at the front. Russ is just placed next to you, and Russ is like... <laughs> Like, kind of like puts an arm around you and is like, all right, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> um, Keld, how yep. are you leading? Are you leaning back into the forest that was attempting to reach out to you? Or are you like, I'm going to do it on my own merits and roll? I'm going to tell you right now, as the kind DM I am, if you embrace the forest, this is what Keld is like what he feels from his dreams and visions or mm -hmm. just his hallucinations, whatever they may be. Whatever that was. <laughs> whatever it was. There is something in you that's like, I could listen to the forest and I could move so quickly. If I'm like, if I believe in the forest and follow it, we could move at a rapid pace. The forest will lead me I do not think it'll keep me safe, though. But right. if you don't embrace the forest, there's rolling involved. There is a chance of failure. What would you like to do? Um, Either way, <laughs> safety is not guaranteed in that's, any of these scenarios. That's very true. Uh... I'll cast Pass Without Trace, too, before we move. Nice. <laughs> Honestly, the hallucination dream stuff is a little spooky, but Keld was... I don't know, there's been something about the forest that he has sort of trusted, even though it's super untrustworthy, if that makes sense. <laughs> hmm.
we're still not that cozy. So I guess I'll just go my own route. Okay. I need you to give me a survival check if you'd be so kind. Russ is going to do perception. Okay. 24 perception. This 16. man is looking. 16. Okay. Looking. Not bad. <laughs> Russ is like, I'm looking into the darkness. So aggressive. And Keld, there is this moment where like, it's almost like these hands reaching out and you say no. I need a wisdom saving throw as you <laughs> begin to lead the group. Shocked Pikachu face. Same for Russ. Okay. That will be a 20... I don't know if you need to give me the rest of that number. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you make Some... Christmas. You're fine. A big 20. Um, also, I think, uh, and then Russ gets like a plus two from you or something. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, boy. And all of you begin to make your way forward. Meanwhile, Nana and Roshan you wake up feeling more well-rested. Um, there is no oppressive energy. There is no dark. There is no freezing, damp forest. You <laughs> are in nice. a warm home, in beds with blankets. You're not wearing blindfolds. You're not sleeping slightly propped up against a tree, so you're ready to throw hands instantly. Uh, Roshan, you lose one of your levels of exhaustion. Hooray! And... Nana, um, as you Yay. wake up, I need you to roll me a d6. A d6, all right. D6 away. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. It's a one. Okay. After spending some time in town and kind of trying to get your head right, you do still feel like you hear um, um, there's like a person who walks by your window and it kind of startles you a little bit. So you're still startled. And you look over at the side table next to you and you see like a bunch of cute little like rocks and your hand is already on them and you are already putting them into your bag. Um, oh no. But no. that sensation of thinking that your friends and your relationship to them is transactional is diminished to just how you may feel as that as a person, but there is no influence making you feel that way. So you are able to now assist and cast spells and help people in uh, with magic and what have you. But you oh. still have, you're still jittery and you still have your compulsion. Man, okay. Um, That's not great. I mean, you could have lost jittery, so I feel like at least it wasn't yeah. it wasn't jittery. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Jittery I can deal with. Yeah. Uh, um, the, yeah. Uh, as you put these rocks just immediately into your bag and you're just like, oh, I'm just taking them for safekeeping, but you must. Um, oh, no. Um, the smell of breakfast greets both of you. Um People around town in the community are going about their business. People are working. People are playing. You can hear conversations outside. Um, what would you guys like to do? Good question. I don't think uh, Roshan wants to... Uh go out but i think he is getting over himself uh at the same time so <laughs> you ever get over yourself <laughs> hey um like, i think mm. he would ask the ladle um very probably a little bit shy but uh is there do you need help with anything i i hate to just eat your food, and 
make your bed, your home a mess. Um, well, you're still welcome to do those things, but of course, I would always appreciate the help. Um, and um, I mean, Nana and Rashan, you are in the same uh, space. These are mm -hmm. the things you hear about that you could do if you wanted to be helpful around town or if you wanted to, you know, go stare into the void. It's really up to you. But um, there is some grocery like shopping that needed to be done. Um, the gathering of firewood was talked about. Um, there is some food prep that's going on around town. Uh, people who are either working with some sort of pickling or like cracking nuts or um, de-shelling and, you know, those kinds of things. Um, there's also talk of some people who are weaving uh, baskets for storage. Uh, and also that Russ had started shoveling every single roof in this community, had just started going down the line um, and was trying to shovel as many roofs as he could. But obviously he is not here right now. So there are still roofs that could be shoveled if one was so inclined. Um, but those are kind of like the tasks that could be accomplished around town, if any of those speak to either of you. I feel like of those, Nana's probably going to gravitate to the roofs because it, it's going to be a place she can get to. She knows for a fact. It's not mm -hmm. very hard for her to mm. scurry up there, do some shoveling, scuff off the last of the frost, and... Uh, progress on to the next roof that'll keep her good and busy while she continues to think about her life and decide whether or not it should be an important decision whether she should steal this shovel or not okay she's like god but what if i need this shovel she says to herself uh as she climbs but up onto why the am roof. i going to need this shovel but what if i do Somebody has to shovel the top of the bubble and it could be me <laughs> it could be me i'd be useful then uh, Nana goes about uh, shoveling roofs. Anything for Roshan? Um, <clears throat> so I think Roshan arrives at his uh, at his choice um, by thinking, who's got the best stories, uh, or might have the the most interesting facts about town, and uh, then he's like. Probably uh, one of the older ladies in town, and he remembers uh, pickling at the inn, and um, he's like, they love to gossip around pickles, so I think he's gonna go uh, figure out who's pickling. I'm I'm hoping it's um, the alligator aunt, but you never know; it could be anyone know. in town. Alligonti. Uh, one second. I know who I want it to be, but there's probably more than one person actively doing this. One second. There's so many people in this town. Ah, okay. So you go over to Team Pickles, and um, it is two older women. One of them you do recognize is Auntie Scala, who is the gator folk, and the other one... Um, who introduces herself to you, an old uh, fur bulg woman. And as you get closer to her, there is like the slight scent of like chickens, like somebody who keeps a lot of chickens. Uh, and she introduces herself as the coddler. And boy, howdy, does this woman not stop? It is the amount of talk that this woman has to give. And you're like, I knew it was pickles. I knew it immediately. And uh, the coddler has much gossip to give. Um, so you picked a good spot if that was your inclination. Yeah. And I think Roshan will basically keep a, a constant unseen servant to add another pair of hands into this. Sure. Um you get to hear this woman who either talks about people in town or does talk about her chickens and does seem to be like, does supply like a good amount of eggs to a lot of people in town and um, has found her niche. Um, but is like, well, I can't just do that all day. And I'm, well, I want to talk to somebody. So I guess I'll do Team Pickles. So she also kind of is brought here by gossip, by the want to gossip. Um, mm. 
and um you get to spend time with two pretty gossipy old ladies today Love are they it. as salty as the pickles they seem very lovely oh well, wine that's while nice. you brine yeah there's no salt to give they are just like have you heard and like the gossip boy it's not that juicy roshan i will say that it is not the juiciest gossip you've ever heard but for this town it's like it's like the hot oh boy goss. you know it's like wow um like um there's a lot of speculation that uh melody the mill um is already pregnant again and just everybody just like wow like calm down you know i think <laughs> Roshan, um, take a break. Un like unaware at first of how rude it comes off, and asks if that's why they call her the mill. There is a moment of such harsh silence, and then the boisterous sound of laughter that immediately snaps through that silence. Um, as um they are very content to have you here with your commentary um they they seem Great. content with that uh but you do learn that her uh her partner is uh marcus or also known as the mold and um talking about how they like recently pretty recently had a child and like they kept referring to it as like like hip age that this child is still carried mm. on the hip and that people are already speculating. It's like, ah, oh, Melody and Marcus <laughs> already pregnant again. They haven't said they are. They're just implying they are. Um, but those are the big things. Um, there's also a lot of talk about um, Grilly's pot mitzvah. They do try to avoid talking about like mm. the big event at the pot mitzvah. They only talk about like the other stuff. They don't talk about you screaming at the sky at the edge of the woods. They don't. They don't gossip about that in front of you. <laughs> Bless them. You can assume they've already done that. They've yeah, probably gone past it. They're like, we already gossiped about it. We're good. Um, but, um, just a lot of talk about people in town and what they're on about. Um, they complain a bit about Orvin, uh, who's also the good grader. And you remember the good grader from, uh, the grand pot story that this is the person who went with him into the woods with, uh, Keld to save him. Um, just talking about that he's an ornery old man and he still thinks he's head of security and that he's doing this, even though his son, the hot iron, is now in that role. But Orvin kind of cause still walks around with that air about him. Um, and they think it's uh, kind of kind of cute and funny, but like also just like, calm down, calm down, Orvin. Uh, so <laughs> those, are the, those are the bits of gossip that you pick up on as you start to pickle a variety of fruit and veg um some meats uh you know fun to be had by all meanwhile back in the woods <laughs> meanwhile back in the woods baby have fun guys keld you're not one to assume things but as you make your way forward it's like is the energy like you almost feel like anger directed at you like instead of mm. like the oppressive energy it almost feels like like it's like somebody glaring at you but there is there is nothing to be seen it is just that well there's so much to see the ever shifting shadows of the woods are constant but it's just like it is the glare of something and also a terrible oppressive energy as you make your way no. forward through the woods. Not a fan of that. <laughs> and it sounds like you have passed without trace. So it sounds like we are stealthing. Let's roll and stealth clank. checks. Clank is clonk, yes, disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 10. 32 for Russ. Jesus. He has to balance out that nat one that he got last time. 
<laughs> and my 13. <laughs> nice. Is that with your plus 10 also? Yeah. Nice. Everybody else? <laughs> 35. 21. Nice. <laughs> clink, clank. And clink, clank, clank, clonk. Um, I mean, pretty good all around as you guys make your way forward, even stealthing, moving much faster than you could before, um, just trying to go at pace when Roshan was like trying trying to outpace the the anger. Kel's like, we got to book it. (laughs) Um, Somebody's mad at me. (laughs) Guys, I think someone's mad at me. Uh, You continue to make your way forward. Um, The air is incredibly thick the deeper you go into the woods. The shadows around you move and shift. The the sort of atmosphere of the place is like walking through a frozen lake. It is cold and damp and thick. It is like inhaling water to an extent as you make your way through the woods, obscured lightly by magic and shadow. Your joints feel sore. Your lungs sting from the, like, cold, frigid air. You are moving through a hostile place that does not want you there. And hey, you are moving with little direction. Hey, Jillian, you're making this place sound really unpleasant. Oh, oh, guys, no, <laughs> come on. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I don't know. You said it was, like, breathing water, so Nyx is actually pretty okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. Nyx is fine. It's cool. It's just Mirkwood, guys cool oh, oh no let me let me fix it i'm sorry let me try again. going Thank in you. circles <laughs> <laughs> let me try again um as you're walking russ puts a hand on your shoulder killed what is it do you do you smell something it smells like ozone or and like you can see Russ is just like stopped and is like looking around. And then you watch Russ like turn fully around to like look. And you hear him mumble like, oh shit, under his breath. And all of you turn and look. And behind you is a dense fog that looms, moving like a solid wave towards you. And it's time for a skill challenge. Is that <laughs> nicer, everybody? <laughs> then is the does skill it challenge nicer? to it's not breathe? Down. And now seeing uh, you don't have to see the unpleasant forest. You're welcome. So you believe that based on what you're presented with as this wall of fog approaches, um, that being inside of it would be bad. And that maybe you could outpace it. Maybe outpace, get around, but it is coming at you. You need to get five successes before three failures. Everybody has to go once before everybody can go somebody could go a second time russ can roll but every time russ rolls he will make a wisdom saving throw or you can have an advantage from russ for somebody's roll which must be called before rolling and if you get a nat 20 you get another advantage from russ who's Hmm. first as the wave of this acrid air moves forward towards you well, I think my first um, inclination is to go faster <laughs> with athletics. <laughs> Have you ever thought about running so fast? Uh, yeah, you can roll athletics, DC 20. Child, like, hmm, and then starts running. <laughs> it can't catch me. 22. Okay. You get... A success as Keld, you're like, well, I'm not going to wait around to see what that is. And Keld like looks to the group, takes his position as lead and starts running forwards as Keld leads you deeper into the woods. Who's next? I would like to use whichever you think is appropriate survival mm-hmm. or nature to, for Fen to point out the fact that fog sits in low lying areas and seeks out low places so he wants to point the party at whatever looks like it might be higher terrain. 
Sure. Um, go ahead and give me survival. You do see that this is like a solid wall, but you're like, if we keep going up, maybe it'll settle somewhere and we can get away easier if we aim for height. So yeah, go ahead and give me survival. DC 20. Say 23. Nice. Well, it wasn't a nice roll, but at least <laughs> it was, at least it was a good skill. <laughs> the outcome is all that matters. Uh, you're like, Hey, I'm about to pull us fully off course for a bit, but it it's going to save us from being murdered, possibly by a wall of fog. So you kind of redirect Keld, who is like, I'll keep bulldozing forward, and all of you keep running in this new direction. Who's next? Could I do perception for something similar, but more leading us to make sure we're not getting too close to the fog? Like, if what he's aiming us for... Might be maybe that's actually the wrong way. I don't know. Just mm. something to see a, a better direction. Yeah, you can make sure that you aren't getting like boxed in or if there's or like uh, there's a hole in the ground. Or... <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and give me perception DC 20. There have been holes oh. in ground. Yeah. Luckily, I only need a 10, and that's what I got. So 20. Dang. There you go. You are able to point out obstacles ahead of the group. You're also able to be like, I know we're heading this way, but you need to veer slightly more this way. We can keep going that way, but we got to veer slightly because we're like going a, to end up. It's going to end up. There's a whole tree there, guys, on the that's, ground. That's rough sailing. Um, <laughs> as you all just keep running, as you can just see this just looming thing behind you. All three of you have gone. Who's next? Three successes. You need two more successes before three failures. Um, I would like to try to use some persuasion just to sort of reach out to the <laughs> woods. Yeah. Whatever lurks in there. Lurks um, very specific. Yeah, go ahead mm -hmm. and roll <laughs> persuasion. DC 20 to try and now reach out to the woods again being like okay actually hey um <laughs> i made a mistake i made a mistake 21 well that's what you need but isn't it held you at this time reach out to the forest do you admit in this moment that it was you made the wrong choice is it more of an energy reach out? Is it a verbal reach out? How, what kind of approach? Um, I guess more of the, uh, I'll admit that I should have listened. Um, <laughs> you never argue with a forest. It's just, you know, Happy forest, was... happy life. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you verbally reach out then and admit fault and ask for direction and begin to lead. You need one more success before three failures. Can I use acrobatics to kind of navigate through the overhanging branches and fallen trees and whatnot. Yeah, you can use acrobatics to try and gracefully move through the forest. Go ahead, uh, DC 20. Oh, that doesn't make a 20, so oops, sorry. Okay. I think Fen is like trying to lead, you know, in the way that he would go and fed and Keld has like diverted the course and Fen like looks and sees that Keld has moved and then he gets smacked in the face by a branch because yeah, just <laughs> <full hit. laughs> Keld, wait, wait and... what? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but you guys continue to move. Fen, you sort of like readjust and write your course and continue forwards. Uh, but you do lose a little ground. We need one success before two failures. Have we done nature yet? We have not. How would you be using nature? To ask the plants which way they think I should go and cast speak with plants. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I like when magic happens. 
and see how these plants fuck around with us. I got 10 whole minutes of plants talking to me now. Talk to them the whole jaunt. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Help. You'll get all the hot goss. They can I'm tell you where the water is. is. To a DC 18. Hey, do you guys okay. know Gary? <laughs> oh, Gary's great. Gary? How about Chris for a nature check? If you can help me through the forest, you can get a t- tattoo like Gary. <laughs> Free tattoo. There's so many trees with oh, tattoos nice. out there. That is 19. 19? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I lowered you. I was just like, you lowered it. Like, I'm so excited, but I lowered the DC. Because you lowered it. Like, <laughs> I'm like, why are you so excited? <laughs> because you said it was okay. Beats it. No, I changed my mind. No. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> We failed. Wow. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> you all run, and Nix, it does take some some skill to differentiate between the plants that are just like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh. It's not bad. And then there's other ones that are screaming run, screaming it to you. <laughs> plants in the distance calling you towards them, Jesus. like, run this way, <laughs> quickly. And then you see that the plants that were like, no, you should stop. It's fine. Change tactic and are like, mm-hmm. run this way. And it's just a bunch of plants screaming. <laughs> and you are now just being like, which plant is not trying to kill me right now? And it's you not inciting these plants. <laughs> so now you're like, these fucking plants. But you all run and run. And you do kind of feel at a point that you feel like you are moving a bit uphill and run and run and when you can run no further and your lungs burn you look back and the fog is no longer in pursuit you can see it far back behind the trees but it does not seem to be in pursuit any further and you've made it past this skill challenge Uh, Russ sort of like but to, like he has his hands like up behind his head and is like doing like deep breathing to like get his like breath back under him. Huh? This place fucking sucks. No offense to the place. Your voice is saying. Yeah, the plants respond to this man talking about them like that. Or <laughs> booing. They're just a of plants going boo. <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> There's one back in the fog that's like, tell him to come here. <laughs> come here. <Wow>. <laughs> come here. <laughs> come back this way. <laughs> come back. <laughs> I want to talk about it. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I Let just want to talk. Um, but you are able to get past this challenge. And after catching your breaths and sort of refinding center and being like okay we all ran off course for a bit but then i followed the woods and then and then we ran uphill and then we followed the plants so it's kind of a little discombobulating for your current positioning but all of you are pretty talented and one of you is still actively listening to the forest mm-hmm. are you still you still you still trust in the forest mm-hmm. yeah you Nobody else gets to trust the forest. <laughs> well, was they can if they it, want. So. I, I was listening to the plants. It's different. He was listening to the plants. Uh, You're listening to the the forest. <laughs> there is a distinction. I mean, yeah, I'm one. listening to the forest a little bit. You're like, thanks, babe. Anywho, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go this way. Um, but you are able to right yourselves and continue forward once again. Russ is like, I'm still good. I'll keep an eye out. Who's leading? All right. Do you want to, or should I take over for a bit? Um, I can keep leading. I feel like I got it. Obligated. I'll do the um, I'll do the last one or the next one. Oh, sounds many. good. Or the next one or the next <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> whichever one I do next. Okay. So Keld, you're leading? Yeah. Are you following and trusting the forest? Yes. Okay. You will not be rolling for survival. 
and you won't be rolling a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. And it's as almost if that oppressive, angry energy subsides hmm. and relaxes, and you are able to listen in and understand where the forest is pointing you. As you begin to lead the group forward, are we doing another casting of Pass Without Trace? Are we stealthing? What's the. Yeah, why not? I got spell slots, guys. <laughs> Who needs these? <laughs> um, you cast Pass Without Trace. Give me some stealth mm -hmm. checks. Held still disadvantage. Fourteen this time. Wow. Slightly better. <laughs> uh, 23 from Russ. Twenty-two. That's how many. Yeah. No, wait, thirty. Sorry, I got a nat twenty. So Nix is in trouble <laughs> oh, nice. right now. Dang. Yeah, no, thirty-two is that number. Okay. You got a forty-two. Jesus. We're nice. behind Did you invisible. <laughs> I turn around and nobody's there. Where is he? Nix fed. Do you think they'll find us? <laughs> Russ. Um, <laughs> So now Russ is the only one rolling wisdom saving throws. I'll give him a plus two from Kel. Doki. You push your way further into the forest. Led on by Kel, you hope is a benevolent energy and not your mind betraying you or something much worse. Something looming in the darkness and waiting. I hope. And that is where we are going to take our break. Uh, we're going to go take a little break. And by take a little break, uh, it's not going to be, it's going to be so little for you guys. So you can go get a snack and a drink in the two seconds that it's going to take me to go like, Wow, and we're back. What a short break. Hi, everybody. Oh. Welcome back to On the Backs oh. of Gods, episode 173. Uh, currently, the party is split. Some are in town, uh, shoveling roofs and making pickles and gossiping. And everybody here in the woods is being chased by an oppressive energy and a wall of terrible fog that wanted to probably kill them. Uh, but we'll never know because nobody went into the fog. So whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Don't go into the fog. Cowards. Then. God, the plants were just screaming at you to run away. Some of them said you should go in, but if, don't, don't trust true. them. Mm. Fine. Um, <clears throat> so you are going forward. Kel, you are listening to the forest, and it seems less oppressive on your mind to do so as you push forward. Like you're like, I can look into the darkness and I feel less of a burden doing so as you make your way forward. Russ, head on a swivel, uh, Nyx as just kind of like a casual participant who probably is looking at Russ. Um, every single time Fen scratches his skin, you watch just his, Russ's jaw tighten and tighten and tighten as he doesn't say anything, he doesn't do anything, but you can see that just like, Every, every little scratch on his skin is just like, it's like nails on a chalkboard for Russ. But he continues pushing forward and looking around and keeping eyes out. But it is grating on him. Um, he's like, like, uh -huh. <laughs> focusing, <laughs> focusing uh, as he is keeping a pretty good eye out. I don't think I rolled his perception check. I just did his wisdom and was like, he he, these are more fun. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. And he seems pretty on point as you guys stealth your way forward. Um, anything while you guys are going? Or is it just like, we are hyper-focusing on forward motion. We're getting there. There is no time for other things right now. We're just moving. Um, If Nyx wanted to ping for plants. But other than that, I think we're, we know our mission. Mm -hmm. I could Pink probably 
do that while walking takes 10 mm. minutes or whatever is a ritual so oh, yeah. might as well <laughs> i will say i hate to be a little bitch about it um if you weren't stealthing i would say mm. yes you could do that but the fact that mm. you were stealthing you would have to like stop stealthing for 10 minutes to do it if you wanted to do it while walking yeah well, well we can check at the next time we are switching who's leading and doing perceptions and stuff. Mm. Okie dokie. You continue Maybe to she make might your like way forward. Tell uh -huh. us to cover his ears. Just just put your hands over your ears. It'll be a lot better that way. But I'm also supposed to be listening out for things. I'll listen, because that doesn't require looking. I'm going to roll his perception check again <laughs> for disadvantage. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hmm. Neat. You make your way forward and Russ just kind of is like, <laughs> kind of like puts his arms up like this, like casual walking, but has just slowly started pushing his arms into his ears um, as you make your way forward. And he's just now like very head on a swivel because now he's focusing fully on like sight and smell because he's like, well, some of the things are smell, I guess. Uh, I guess that's something I have to look out for, too. Um, you make your way forward. Keld, you feel like you are making pretty good progress if the forest isn't lying to you. It is unnerving in the is sense of, of walking towards something that you were not conscious of ever being at don't know where it is, don't know if it'll still be there, and you could maybe walk forever. That is a thought that crosses your mind of, what if there is nothing in this direction, nothing I'm looking for, and yet you push forward. Yeah, he's going to squanch that feeling, that thought down. Yeah, nope. Um <laughs> Russ, um, a little in, once again, stops. And um, as he's staying there like this, slowly kind of like butterflies his arms out. I heard something like a... Like a couple loud thumps, but like far off. I think, and he points kind of like to the side. So you guys are going like this way. He points that way. He's like, there's something, something thumping over there. Like enormous footsteps. Oh, if you're going to lead to the witness, I would say yes, like large footsteps. Hmm. Does it sound like it's getting closer? Um... If you give me a minute to to sit and listen, but or would we prefer to keep moving? I'll still keep listening and looking out, but but it sounded like it was I almost feel like I heard like the end of the echo of it. Like it didn't seem close, but but I can keep listening. Okay. Yeah, I'll wanna... tell you if I hear it again. If if I we want to push forward, try to talk to the plants to make sure we don't go near it. They might know which way to avoid. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you guys think? I'm entirely trusting the rest of you. If you trust the plants, then I, yeah, like. Decide which ones are good plants because some of them were telling me to run into the the fog before, and some right. were you know actually helpful. But that's a little concerning. <laughs> you can ask. Them. Sure, you guys can stop for a bit and cast. Um, it's speak an with plants. Oh, easy! You can stop for six seconds and cast. Uh... <laughs> right. She'll, so she'll cast it. Um, do you all know, sorry, hello, um, if there's anything large coming this way, 
because we're trying to not go towards it. Something large. Is there something large coming this way? Is there something large coming this way? Is there something large coming this oh, way? Gosh. And it's like a telephone. <laughs> And you can hear that the further away it gets, it's just kind of warping a little bit, as oh, no. any game of telephone does, as it makes its way. <laughs> and there's kind of quiet, as you can see, just like these plants not moving, not personified, but like, <laughs> it's like they're waiting to hear back. <laughs> Has it ever been in this area while well, we're waiting? Just wondering. Oh, 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 oh. Something big. Yes. Because mm -hmm. we, we, we were near something large before. It was like doing rounds. And we don't want to be near it. Oh. To try to chase us before. Oh. Mm-hmm. Is it bad? Is it just, you know, is it helping people fight where they need to? Or is it going to attack us? Mm -hmm. Well. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's never hurt me. Has it hurt you? Mm. Never hurt me. Has it hurt you? And then it begins <laughs> this telephone again. <laughs> <laughs> like as I hurt you mm. oh <laughs> and you hear like down the line it's like I heard someone got stepped on terrible and then terrible then terrible just gets brought down the line like the whole mm. telephone like breaks there and like oh that's terrible that mm. people got stepped on so that seems to be the thing is being plants in this area right sometimes you get stepped on you get stepped on but mm. you haven't experienced seeing beings like us get injured Oh, Just plants your, stepped on? You're mm. not a plant. Seems mm. to not fully grasp that concept, but understands that you are not a plant. And right. that is kind of like trying to get the concept into their brain. Their brain. Um, mm. Well, I'm probably closer to one than some of the others in the group, but I'm not one. Oh, uh, we haven't felt, I haven't felt you non-plants ever. Oh. Hmm. Nix, what are they saying? Uh, they, you know, oh, they haven't gotten Looking at the ground? <laughs> they haven't told I, me yet about if the it's coming this way, but they haven't ever seen people like us. But it has there, stepped on plants before. There are no people area. like us. Well, they haven't seen any non-plants, it sounded mm -hmm. like. Well, we've seen non-plants? Just not. You, I guess. Oh. There are things here that walk around. Sometimes. But they don't hurt us. Sometimes. Someone will get eaten. But it seems right. That happens in most woods. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes That's people good. get eaten. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And you can hear the sound of like <laughs> voices slowly like getting louder again as the telephone is now coming back. Oh Wait. <laughs> And it's just, it almost sounds like, you know, just a crowd going like, ha, ah, like that's what it sounds like as like this, this wave of plant voices comes like down the line. And Nyx, finally you start to like be able to like enunciate what they are saying. Run, run, run. run. And it okay. is screaming run at you. 
<laughs> Let's go. She's going to start leading them and running. <laughs> Nick oh. just starts and runs. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you get eaten. Congratulations. Oh. Great. <laughs> Don't like that. <laughs> They're so kind, guys. They're so, so <laughs> nice and terrible. You all start running. And they're as nice we, as any tree could be. We are going to enter another skill challenge, but oh, I will oh. give some direction in this to mm -hmm. to give assistance of what I think may or may not be helpful. You can use your turn on this skill challenge to find out or lead yourself in a direction possibly of what you think you should do. Of using your knowledge of this thing and what you have heard and what has happened thus far to figure out a plan on what to do. Or you all can stand there and be like, we're going to fight it. You know, that's also an option. Or you can just keep running. You can hide. But you can also use your turn to establish an idea of what you think may be useful. All the same rules of a skill challenge still exist during this. We need to get five successes before three failures. Russ can give advantage. Or he can do something but you know wisdom saves and all that mm. who wants to go first i know this so, one's a little, a little weird. since i was leading the running i think i would do perception for best path to run in the okay. immediate okay go ahead and give me a per uh, perception check uh dc 20 Oh, yeah. Uh, 28. Okay. You feel like you have a pretty good idea of where to run the most efficiently. And as you are running, you remember that if you had just kept running, that thing would have caught you. So there is a point where you're like, I think running might run out. Mm -hmm. Depending, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, it's fast. And yeah. you slowly start to hear that boom, boom, boom. As this thing is like, and there's like such a wide berth between each hit, the speed at which this thing is moving. But Nix, you are moving the group quickly forward. So you are buying yourself a good bit of time. Um, who's next? So I'd like us to be less obvious, like, We've already got passed with a trace on us and we've already done stealth checks, but I'd like to see if I can get like Keld to be quieter so that we're not as easily tracked. I'm I'm hoping to use stealth somehow to gain some information on like what is triggering this thing to like how can we hide ourselves? You know what? Okay. I was about to make you shift skills, but you know what? I like it. I've been, I've been, you know what? You got me. Uh, roll stealth for me. Uh, DC 20. Mm -hmm. You got me. You win. Oh, yeah. That's a 32, 73. 33. <laughs> 73. <Yeah. laughs> like, do you want to know how to stealth? Have you ever watched a man just get raptured instantly? He's like, and then he was gone. <laughs> he stealth straight to heaven. It's the wildest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Um, okay. So as you are just running as fast as you can, and you know that the Pass Without Trace is up, but the fact that you guys are running makes it currently null and void. So, but you're like, okay, we were Pass Without Trace. Yeah, I didn't count and Pass Without Trace in that role. I, that was yeah, just no, a, no, no, yeah. certainly not. Um, but you're like, but it still located us. And you're like, did we have that last time? And also last time we were up in the rope trick and it wouldn't leave that area even though it could not see us I think it smells magic hmm. and you feel pretty confident in your assumption Interesting. how do we unmagic drop the pass without trace drop it I'll drop it <laughs> immediately okay. so you have dropped what you think is at least pinpointing your direction it is now still in pursuit 
but you now no longer have magical effects up. Now you have to decide, am I outrunning this thing? Am I fighting this thing? Or now can we actually hide and let this thing go past? These are the options. Who's next? Or some other thing. You guys are smarter than me. Some other fourth thing. <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope you guys are smarter than me because my brain's real smooth. I sure hope so. Uh, but it ain't uh, me, bud. Uh, but Kel, you're up if you'd like to. How would you like to engage or avoid this creature? And you can hear how loud each step is. I mean, my inclination is to maybe either hide or find a way to sort of change our... Okay, um, I think mm -hmm. I will try to is okay. incite the right thing. Um, For what particular I, thing? Keld would like to, I think, sort of reach out to the woods to sort of mm. ask it for like an alternate path or like some sort oh, I of love I love when we talk to the woods. That's my favorite. I'll always say yes to talking to the <laughs> woods. Uh roll insight to feel the energy <laughs> of the woods and if it has any insight for you in this moment. Yeah. As you run shunk a shunk a shunk of armor Maybe she through does. the woods. Uh DC twenty. <clears throat> That'll be a twenty two. Okay. Right, R2. Held, you reach out to the forest, and it's kind of similar to that moment when you were like looking at Nana, and it's like almost like she was the forest for a moment, like because she was almost so far gone, you couldn't see her for the trees, right? Um, mm -hmm. But that's kind of what it looks like as you look forward at the forest now. Almost some things blur out of focus a bit for you. And some things, like, become more distinct feeling, whether visually or physically to you, things become more distinct. And a lot of those present to you as either hiding places or places where to you could pl block off vision for a moment. It's, the forest is like, here's spots you can hide. You can try this. So, Keld, you are presented with hiding options from the forest. All right. We need like two that. more successes <laughs> before two failures. Or three failures. My bad. That'd be scary, wouldn't it? Um, so, who's next? Russ is just jogging with her. <laughs> like, yeah, let's run. Fuck this shit. <laughs> just following our lead. He's like, wherever you guys go, I'll go. I'll help if I need to help. Don't be scared. Well, see, the, the one idea I have, I'm like, oh, that's going to be something I have a minus one in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could get that advantage on it. So bad. Oh, you actually, but then you couldn't get it. I'd give it to you if you got a nat 20, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I need a different idea. Yeah, no, you guys can take yeah. a moment, but can not I, too long. Can I mm. use a. Uh, nature or survival to look for a reasonable place that a party of our size could hide sure i think keld has already assisted with being like we have to hide i think here this area and then you're like well the forest isn't blurring and unblurring things for me so yeah you can use that which right. one would you which, like to use what were your options uh, i uh survival or nature either one would be fine uh, give me. me survival please dc 20 okay a 22. Okay. You look forward and you can't exactly hide together, but you do see adequate spots that you all could like dive into mm -hmm. and you think that you could be relatively well hidden if need be. So you have been able to point out hiding spots in the area that Keld pointed out. So there's places to hide. 
we need. I'm feeling a little cheeky, guys. Do you guys want to be a little cheeky about this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if if mm -hmm. you're feeling a little cheeky, if you guys want to be a little cheeky. You're you're the DM. You decide the well, cheek. I guess level. we're being cheeky. Uh so mm -hmm. and you know what? I can be talked out of this, I promise. But here's my thought. You need to get one more success before you get three mm -hmm. failures. I will allow in this moment a group stealth check. Whatever the immediate, whatever the middle roll is, the middle roll, that is the number you get on this skill check. So you need the middle person to get a 20. And we got this. You will succeed with flying colors. If you fail, I will mark off all three failures. Mm. We got this. <laughs> we got this. Right, guys? With my <laughs> plus two, <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, you I just... forgot we turned off pass with others. <laughs> sure do. <did. laughs> See, and the thing is, because there are four of you, I will take the higher of the middle one. So it's whoever is the middle and the best. So you have to hope that two people mm. get a 20 or higher. Which is doable. For thinking. somebody. <laughs> what do you guys think? I will, I will leave this to you and... Um, Actually, to sweeten the pot, because it's not really a fair deal, I will give you a boon. I will give you a boon if you accept Jillian this Jillian really deal. wants us to... I just think I, it's fun. I think it would be fun. <laughs> I'll give you a boon. This is a better uh, role for me than my minus one arcana I was planning, so... Uh, disadvantage <laughs> who? <laughs> disadvantage who, bestie? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Russ will also be rolling. Um... Russ Figured. is in this. Um, I kind of counting on that. Yeah. They're like, you would be like, no, if Russ was in rolling. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I was like, do you have anything okay. else that's helpful, Russ? Oh, is that for only for saving throws? No. Uh, I forgot Russ has indomitable. Oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. I'll use that next time. Um, one second. I'm just seeing if he gets some sort of fancy man. No. Okay. All right. Everyone roll stealth. We're ready. Okay. It's been worse. Got twenty. Got well, the twenty. Twenty-five. And eighteen on the dice. <laughs> and uh Keld, what do you have? Nine. That's what nice. <laughs> and Russ got an eighteen. So Nix with the twenty gives us exactly the role we needed. Yes. Um, uh... <laughs> I will write the word boon down and get you one of those. I fucking did it. You have so all of you. Left. Now we can hide. <laughs> now you can hide. You all run forward into these hiding spots and wait. And Nix, Russ, like, has sidled up next to you. And as the footsteps get louder and louder, you see he is viscerally struggling not to engage. You can see, like, he grips, like, fingers into the dirt. Like, don't jump out. Like, you can see he wants to go engage in combat. You shall, like, hold on to him, too. Like, because I can't cast magic to stop you. I can't stop <laughs> you. Um, you, in this moment, with your 20, are able to keep Russ from jumping out and immediately fighting this thing. As he mm -hmm. just takes a breath and you see starts to try and like go into more of like a meditative state and is trying to like use key and like focus and of course the way all of you are hiding in these like uh like 
these tangled thickets and like crevasses in the bases of trees. You'd have to shuffle yourselves and turn and look to see this thing. But you can only hear it as it takes large galloping steps through the woods. And it gets softer and softer and softer until the noise is gone and you have avoided this thing. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, my beautiful fail conditions. It's fine. Oh, no. <laughs> fine. Why won't you let me step on you, party? As it gets later and later into the day, you kind of at least are able to take a sigh of relief as you have avoided this thing for the second time now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back at home, am I right, everybody? Back in Meanwhile, the- Meanwhile, back at the ranch. The sun is shining and starting to make its way down in the sky. Um, you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. The people are happy and cheerful and having a good time. Uh, people are going about work. Some people look like they're heading home or going shopping and gathering supplies for the day. Uh, and at one point- uh, Roshan, you have just finished carrying like a um, a large like barrel of pickles to be like moved out. You're like carrying these out because the two old ladies were like, "Oh, we we can't. We definitely don't always move these. You should do it uh, <laughs> and get you to go take one of these uh, containers to storage." Uh, Nana, you have finished off another house, and um, there's a point where you two sort of kind of reconvene for a moment mm. as you are making your way uh, through town, and um, currently you have not received a call from your friends. Um, that sending still sits in the ring, or it sits on the floor covered in blood because they're dead. Those are really the two options, isn't it? Mm. Uh, who's sure to say? Is. Um, yeah. as hmm. the two of you prepare to like wind down for the day whatever you may do at night is up to you mm -hmm. um but as you two kind of really oh hey um and yeah. and as you kind of get like the the pleasantry out of the way and nana mm -hmm. you have to pretend like you're not shocked every time you look at roshan um yeah it's like, and like it's worse because of the startle response you startled know startled every time it's you see him you're like every oh, time just hey oh, hey <laughs> You you startled me because a mini of heart you were attack sneaky. every time. Um, it's, it's 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 your aesthetic. It's very good. It's funny seeing you here. Right here. <laughs> Nana runs, mobile feet <laughs> gone. <laughs> um, gone. But as the two of you meet up and are just like, hey, and are able to talk about your day if you're so inclined, you hear uh, someone like yelling from a bit of ways. You hear a kind of a, a higher octave voice going, Bailey! And it, there is a, it sounds like a child yelling from from a little bit of ways. Should, should we go and make sure everything's all right? I mean, other folks are probably busy doing some other jobs and I suppose we're in between. Uh, yeah. Roshan looks down at the barrel of pickles, like... Uh, oh, Roshan, you've already dropped off your barrel of oh, pickles. Ah. This is your way if, back. If there's, yeah, if there's no barrel of pickles, mm -hmm. then uh, Roshan will Sorry, nah, 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 uh, slightly reluctantly <laughs> uh, follow the sound of this voice. Sadly now yeah. has no excuse because he already dropped <laughs> off his barrel of pickles. Um, Heck, I've already fulfilled that obligation damn um the two of you sort of you know speed walk your way over mm -hmm. uh you see a group of three children standing at the base of a tree uh a young goblin girl a little human boy and a kobold child uh all looking up at the tree and about 15 feet up you see a fluffy calico sitting on a branch 
as uh, they all yell Bailey at it and like are trying to coax this cat down, uh, (laughs) but are having no success. You hear the uh, little uh, goblin girl. It's getting late, Bailey. We have to go home. And Bailey is unfazed. (laughs) Bailey sits in the tree, unmoving. We could try diplomacy, but every cat I've tried to speak with has seemed very sure that they wanted to do exactly what they were doing and were very certain they did not want to be anywhere else. I'm not sure that would get us far. Um, I mean, I could probably fly up and get this cat. I mean, it's is, either you is, fly up or I could shimmy up, I think. Will Bailey attack me if <laughs> I try to get Bailey out of a tree? Um, all the kids look at you now, like, uh, accepting that adults are on the scene. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, the, the little goblin help. little goblin girl looks up at you. She is really nice, I promise. <laughs> that uh, is ominous. Terrible, uh, yes. But, you know, uh, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, if you want. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm wearing a jacket and gloves, so. I can uh, give you speak with animals if you want. Sure. To clean the situation. Let's... I'm better with my words, I suppose. Oh, oh, hang on. I'm looking at the description of the spell. It is self, and the ring oh. isn't with us. Mm. Fuck. That's okay. Mm. Shame. Um. <laughs> so, <laughs> Roshan, it's it's probably the the calmest unfurling of his uh tattoo wings that has ever happened oh um and he just slowly glides up 30 feet and puts out both hands and says are we gonna do this the easy way or the hard (laughs) way Uh, first off as you ascend you hear Wow, from like the the like the yeah. oohs and ahs of these children, mm-hmm. and was like, "Oh, this is almost as cool as that bird fight." And <laughs> um, that was some bird little, fight, wasn't it? The little human oh, boy. boy. Yeah, there were these big birds, and they. Oh yeah. And then they were people. Oh. Oh, that must have been very difficult when they fell out of the sky when they couldn't fly, right? Um, you see um the little kobold uh boy. Yeah, they're probably dead. Oh no. He kind of like gives like a little shrug. Not be. Oh no. Not be. Probably. Roshan also I shrugs know. at that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Inside um, possibly. Roshan, you lock eyes with Bailey the Calico. <laughs> oh no. Oof. Don't lock eyes. And you um, give me animal handling. Come on, man. Do you still have disadvantage? I can can only assume. Can I give him help? Can I give him help? Just get him to blink. I I think when you're 15 feet away on the ground, it's hard to give him help. I could have piggybacked, but... Uh, Well, one's a nat 20, but the other is a 5. Plus 5 is 10. Oh, bud. Roshan, you're not like an animal guy. That's not... It's not what anybody says about you when they describe you to their (laughs) friends. Uh, But there's a moment where you just kind of like are looking at this cat and then you Mm -hmm. kind of like realize you're just staring really hard at it and you blink. (laughs) And then the cat you see begins to like slowly close their eyes and then stops and you're like, oh, and you could try to slow blink at this cat to um, show it that you are a friend and that you mean I'm no harm not uh, if you're so inclined. To hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I think he takes a few seconds uh, giving it the slow blink, uh, but fully knows that uh, he can't fly for very long like this, so mm-hmm. uh, Hurry up, cat. <laughs> we'll Come soon on. go in with the scoop. Uh-huh. 
the second you see the eyes almost close, you're like, all right, Bailey, let's go. go. And you grab Bailey and kind of like hold it like this. You're like, all right, Bailey. Like a baby, like a baby. Support the head and the butt. Uh, Roshan, (laughs) you keep just now maneuvering this cat. Like, how am I supposed to hold it? As you uh, slowly descend and basically like the um, like the last half foot, your wings sort of just curl back in and you just kind (laughs) of and you sort of like land that last like six inches and uh, the little goblin girl like still hurts. Yeah, you're like on my ankles, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) the bottoms of my feet. (laughs) Why are they like glass? Um, (laughs) Uh, but the little goblin girl runs up to you and like puts her hands up and is like and goes to like grab the cat from you uh roshan will um kindly give her the cat quickly Mm, okay Mm, relinquish Uh, holding this cat in her arms and like it's it's a big calico this is a large cat and Lord. little goblin girl kind of like looks back up at you holding this cat and like her ears seem like kind of like really dangly and droopy and kind of hang to the length where the cat is like dangling. So it's just like oh. these long ears hanging next to her head. <laughs> Thanks. And like, you know, children aren't going to sit there and be like, oh, my God, thank you so much. I really appreciate no. it. Yeah. That was so nice of you. You get a no. solid thanks because somebody ingrained that into her brain. And then the other children <laughs> picking up on that also uh, mm. like mm. say they're like, thanks, uh, yeah. like <laughs> really abrupt. Uh-huh. And um, immediately awesome. all three go sprinting mm. and you swear yeah. you can almost hear like the sounds of their parents already calling them home as it's getting mm. late. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, let's hope they remember this one not the one who fell out of the sky like a bird well it didn't seem like they'd made the connection i think they they did not figure out who it was was the birds and that doesn't need to be discussed strictly speaking you're right and then roshan will turn to leave (laughs) Uh, just 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 one second i am Bro, I'm, I don't know about you. I'm feeling better being here among sane people, people at all. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be useful if I go back in there, if I'm not much better tomorrow how about you i don't know i'm tired i'm still not moving fast so i'm not sure did you get some good sleep last night at least i don't remember so i assume yes it's generally how you remember a good night's sleep, typically. It's been a while since you've had one, I think. I'm glad that the ladle was able to help. Um, I don't know if, um, if all you think you might need for a good night's sleep might be, I don't know, stories or, or something. I'd help if, if you wanted. I love to know what kind of stories they tell here, and the ladle must know. So maybe she's got something, something fun to tell us. I think so. Well. I guess um, 
let me know if the if there is anything that I can do. Um, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I'm. I don't feel like I'm really bouncing back as fast as I'd like to be, and I don't know. I I don't like leaving the rest of them fending for themselves from everything we saw. I know they've got Ross, and they're all probably doing fine, but... What's kept me sane not being there is knowing that the way I am right now would slow them down and make it harder for them. And so the only thing I can focus on now is rest and getting better. It still sucks, but yeah. can't help them if we can't help ourselves. It's weird. I don't know. It's kind of funny that helps you feel more sane. I don't know. Maybe we should get back. I'm sure the ladle has something warm and bubbly on the stove. Yeah. That'll fill in the cracks. Okay. And the two of you make your way back to the house and good assumption. Um, there is a hearty dinner ready for both of you when you arrive um, with like large hunks of bread on the side to sop up any of the juices from this stew. And it is a delicious meal. Mm -hmm. And you are able to fill your bellies and be in a warm space and hope to continue healing. Meanwhile, four people crawl their way out of a bush. <laughs> <laughs> Did not get stepped on today. You drag yourselves out from your hiding places. It is now the final leg of your journey for today. And Russ sort of like raises a hand. Somebody else able to step in for, for being eyes? Yeah. I'm Kel, just... Are you, are you still okay, Kel, to do one of the two? And I can... Step into his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so which one of you is leading and which one of you is lookout? Nix's eyes. Yeah, I'll look out. Do we okay. want to do search for plant before we start to move? Or mm. Okay. Yeah. Ritual search for plant. Everybody vibes for a couple Ritual. minutes. 10 we do minutes it before we climb out of the bush. Actually. Yeah, you go back into the bush and <laughs> and you cast case. magic. Um, <laughs> Katie, roll me a luck check. Oh. The 14? If that's a good number. <laughs> Sounds lucky good. to me. It's double seven and it's over 10. Uh, and this is ritual, right? Yeah. Or is it instant? I can do it instant. Uh, oh. You know, you it's think... near the end of the day. Yeah. And since I'm not doing Pass Without Trace this time, I'll just do it instant. Okay. You think in your heart of heart, Nyx, that um, if you had done a 10 minute long ritual. Bad um, idea. It would have <laughs> been bad. Um, <laughs> but just like a spark of magic, hopefully. Be like pass it without trace the uh rope trick those are like very long lasting spells mm -hmm. so hopefully just a blip of magic will not be as detrimental and you can feel that sensation of the hairs standing up like even harder on the back of your neck and you're like 
we're close. We're really close, but I cannot pinpoint the direction. It is just, it is out of the periphery. And you don't know if like, you know, if there could have been one miles back, but you know, it was in the yeah. other direction, you know? Yeah. So still not within five miles. Got it. All <laughs> right. There's Let's one go. just sitting at the edge, like, no. It's like I'm please. at 5.1. <laughs> I'm right no, here. No, I'm right here. Five miles and a foot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Five miles and a foot. <laughs> Five miles and a foot. Oh, no. But Keld, you begin to lead the group. Nix, you begin to um, keep eyes out. And Russ sort of like kind of like rubs at his face a bit. <laughs> it's really weird because like I can tell that I am altered in some way like it's a mm -hmm. very weird sensation like I am altered but I'm aware of it it's just it's it's weird it's real weird uh, well I think it's good if you're still aware of it I can yeah. I can tell that some like something's wrong here but like I'm aware of it I can I can tell yeah, so maybe just don't just don't look sure I'll 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 look Just elsewhere. Focus on us. Yeah. yeah all right. Um, he walks behind Nyx, um, and he is going to focus as he walks forward and does not look out into the darkness. Um, Keld, how are you leading? Are you listening to the forest? I am listening to the forest, keeping an open channel with the forest. I am opening all channels to the forest. <laughs> okay, so you will not be rolling a survival check and you will not be rolling a wisdom saving throw. Nix, give me a perception check and a wisdom yep. saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Another 14, so 24 on perception. Ooh. And, oh, even better on the saving throw, 28. All right. And you begin to make your way forward, keeping an eye out. Nix, you can feel the oppressive energy of the woods. And you're like, hey, I just had a whole ass conversation with these plants. This place, honestly, could be worse. And um, you are able to at least keep your mind clear as you move forwards. And Fen continues to pick at his skin. And oh, no. Russ eventually goes back to like putting his arms up and like covering his ears and like kind of just like walking and just focusing <laughs> towards Nyx as hard as he can. Um, as you guys begin to make your way forwards, there's a couple times, Nyx, where like you tell the group to stop and just some sort of mangled shadow in the distance just will clamor its way by and just leaves you unharassed because you did not happen to run into it as you walked but it was it was almost like as if you had like a black string and you jumbled it together like this like you watch something like that almost like spiral through the tree line and and you're not even positive if it was real or not but you're like we got to stop to let whatever that is go by that's not our business. And there's a couple moments like that where you have to just wait. But you keep pushing forward as Keld is leading you and Keld is leading you deeper into the worst parts of this place. That's where you guys want mm. to go. That is your intent. It it's only <laughs> gets worse as you make your way forward. And it is just like darkness claws at the corners of your vision. The shapes around you move and shift. The air feels malicious and chokes you. The wind bites at your flesh, and it feels like every shadow in this place pursues like you are prey. It is a constant feeling of being watched, being observed, being hunted as you make your way forward. There are monsters behind every tree. Dreams you have had stand before you like they are reality. Keld, you look up and watch a huge moth fly overhead. The trees bend and twist, the ends of the branches sharp like teeth. Voices verging from whispers to shouts echo through the forest. Some you swear are begging you for help and others are screaming and calling for death. 
upon each and every one of you as you step forward and forward. Some of the voices sound familiar. Some don't. But you know, as you can feel just this tickling in your mind, this twisting of your conscious, you know that something is actively affecting you. Some of these things can't be real. As Keld, if you point at something, you look up at this moth, and at one point somebody looks up and they don't see anything Keld is looking at. Something mm. is assaulting your mind. And we have another skill mm. challenge. The skill challenge is how do you push forward and try to ignore the contorting of your and your friend's brains? How do you fight your minds being assaulted? How do you push forward hoping that what you are experiencing is false? You need can to I get- physically run? Can I just run? <laughs> uh, you need six successes before three failures. All the same things still apply with Russ and what he's doing. Who'd like to go first? How do you fight against this mental assault or bolster the people around you or ignore it? However you want to deal with this. I do medicine for something like being able to lead meditation for people to like nice. stay focused on. <laughs> Deep breaths, everybody. Deep All right, breath we're going to do medicine. some grounding <laughs> exercises. Does anybody Everyone? see... Like, all right, name a sound you can hear and something you can see. <laughs> oh, um, <no. laughs> we're all using our solar panels, right? <laughs> right, your solar panel. Breathe from the solar panel. Um, mean, you guys right. don't see the giant moth. <laughs> Kel, that, like, that, <laughs> Kel, that was in the other forest. That... <laughs> oh, there was a giant moth in the other no, forest. It was There's made giant of skulls, moths. I think. Um, oh, well, lots of moths next... in this forest. There's a lot of moms here. Nix, if you want to go ahead and give me a medicine check, DC 20. 21. Okay. You focus on leading the team in mindfulness and grounding, being like, hey, you can't let your mind wander out there. You have to keep it here and in this space and in your person. And that's what you fight to do is also heed your own words. As you hear a familiar voice that you can't pinpoint, but it calls to you from the woods and it keeps drawing your focus, but you focus back inwards. Who's next? I, I would I like, to. oh, go ahead. No, <laughs> I'll call you. Oh, okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, so I know I want to use insight to sort of insight the forest and because I'm trusting it to lead me where I want to go, of course, but it's also playing these mean games. So just trying to, you know, read between the lines. Okay. Trying to can find a motive in the madness. Can I mm -hmm. help by prodding a little bit on that? Um, um, tell me what you're thinking and I will consider it. I've been intending to ask Kel because he seems to know where he's going. <laughs> Kel. Is the forest leading you to Rose, or is it leading you someplace else? That's a good question. I just... I think it's leading me to where I need to go. We've but I'm not sure if that's where Rose is or not. Several things we need to accomplish while we're out here, and some of them need to happen before others, or would be better happening before others, in my opinion. Just a thought, something to think on. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. go ahead and give me insight, if you'd be so kind. I'm not going to, this will not bolster or take away in any way, but the conversation was had. So DC 20. Net 20. Well, there you go. You guys now have two advantages at your disposal. As <laughs> Keld, you reach out and to the forest and it's like, you get angry when I don't listen to you. And when I listen to you, I am still assaulted at every turn by you. <laughs> Girl, come on. What's happening? <laughs> And 
with a nat 20. What does that add up to in the grand scheme? 26. Okay. <laughs> it's strange. There is something out there that you believe is helping you. It showed you where to hide. It is leading you somewhere, though the path has been treacherous. You have not been harmed in the night. There is something out there that is helping. There is something out there that is not. There is something else out there that is hurting and harming and is content with that. And they are on equal footing. Something craves to help and something craves to hurt. The forest is at odds. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what a mess. <laughs> but with this, you know now that you must sort between the two energies that you're being presented with of the forest. And trust that the ones that even lean helpful are doing their best. And that's what you trust and hope that it pushes you forward. And knowing that something out there is being oppressive and attacking you. And it is a way to kind of carp... Um... <laughs> Guys, I can't say the word. It's gone. Uh, it's <laughs> gone forever. Goodbye. But you are able to, in your mind, sort and focus on each individual thing now. You know Compart something wants toys. to hurt. Yes. I was like, <laughs> carp a -be -be -bop. Like, it was all <laughs> just like, beep, 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 beep. Like, it was just the syllable. <laughs> bop, beep, beep, boop, boop. All but right. with that held, you're like, okay, the nice thing that I'm reaching out to is helping me. But there is something else. So you are able to focus on the help to help you move <laughs> forward. That's your second okay. success, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so you guys have two advantages left. You need four more successes before two failures. What's next? <clears throat> I would like to use nature. Mm -hmm. I know that this is not the most natural of woods. It's very different from places we've been, but Fen's been to a lot of different types of woods at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping he can lean on some of that experience to give some bit of insight into what's actual and what's in his head. Okay. Go ahead and roll for me. DC 20. <gasps> oh, there you go. You guys have three advantages. Wow. Uh, and three more successes that need to be acquired. Um, each, each next roll can be with advantage if you're so inclined. I was going to say... Uh, Fen, you sort of have to get real logical about it. You, as you walk through the woods and go forward, you're like, that voice isn't real because it isn't echoing right. The source of it, where I think it is, it doesn't make sense the way it echoes, how loud it is, how soft it is. It's not making sense. It's not real. That you can push away. That large thing that flew overhead. There's something moving in the branches, but I don't hear the branches creaking overhead. There are just these small things that you pick up on and you're like, this is fake. This is in mm -hmm. my mind. And you're almost like, if my mind could get its shit together, it should know to make the branches creak. It's almost like, wow, it's almost a little insulting. Um, but you are able to pinpoint kind of logical flaws in some of these hallucinations. And there are some things where you're like, you kind of just have to assume. You're like, I'm going to assume that's a hallucination because everything else happening right now is. These screams, the uh, voices I don't recognize, some of them don't sound right. And so you're able to kind of focus in on the, the little flaws and push forward. All right, there are three left these all happen with advantage. 
What do we got? I do animal handling to like watch the animals to see if they're responding to these things to see if they're real or not. Sure. Um, for animal handling, yeah, or perception, okay. whichever. Which would you prefer? I mean, perception's better. I was just trying to think of a fun, different thing to use. Oh, you can do the fun thing if you want to, or you can do <laughs> the the other thing. It's up to you. You can try to watch the animals and see if. The try and find animals to yeah, attempt and watch them the animals are <laughs> not they're a little sparse but you could try to find somebody and be like are you chilling <laughs> are you chill <laughs> i'm chill i think uh, it's fun okay i have go advantage with, anyway you have advantage go with animal handling dc 20 oh i got it on the first one but let's see if it's better yeah no, the first one the first one was right okay what do we the got? second one was a net one <laughs> Ooh, second one, not good. 22. Okay. 22. Yeah. Nix, there's a moment where you walk by just this little rabbit that has been, looks normal as shit. There's just a normal rabbit that like hops by and you watch like this giant maw open in the tree next to it and just like these jagged, dripping, terrible teeth. And this rabbit is just sitting there unfazed by it does not see it mm -hmm. and you're and it is a bit grounding to know that it's like okay if the rabbit isn't losing its mind right now <laughs> that's not real and i trust this rabbit with my life <laughs> i trust this rabbit with my whole Just life pick up that rabbit i'm gonna bring the rabbit <laughs> <laughs> you pick up this rabbit <laughs> he gets it you just kind of point the rabbit at things the rabbit first off is like holy shit but then it's like and chills and you just kind of are <laughs> able to like one hand yeah you just have one hand holding a rabbit and using it kind of like a dowsing rod and just being like is this working is that evil <laughs> all right i, I trust the ears you. are sticking out like the ears yeah. are whoop, 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 whoop. um if the ear twitches we go a different way guys <laughs> okay who's next we have two more successes before two failures all right, Keld, what are we doing? We want to reach out to the nice part of the forest and use some persuasion mm -hmm. to sort of For... persuade mm -hmm. her to be a little more forthcoming, if you will. Okay. Go ahead and give me persuasion. You have advantage. Blow some air kisses. Are you trying to fuck the forest uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean I'm thank god i had the forest. advantage <laughs> Our the forest seems to want him uh what do we got killed 17 okay you reach out looking for more assistance looking for leading and you are left wanting as this image, this visceral hatred pointed at you by something, pointed at all of you by something, is much stronger in this moment. And the other piece cannot be coaxed out. And is almost diminished by the fact that it could not in this moment be of more assistance. Oh no. And... You are left no, now okay. a, a bit guideless in this moment. You need one success before one failure. Oh, no, you need two successes before one failure. My bad. Hope you guys didn't get too excited. My bad. Jesus. Don't get too excited. One of those you get advantage on. Um, ben realizes that he's been kind of dragged along in has kind of been, you know, baggage for the past day, day and a half. And he's going to dig down deep and he sees that, that Keld is faltering a little bit in, in leading. Uh, so he's going to use survival to, uh, to try and find our way back onto a path. Okay. Have we used survival yet for this? Yeah, I don't think uh, so. I use nature. I have not used survival. Okay. Um, 
Are you going to use the advantage or are you going to save it? Gonna save it. Okay. So you need to get us a nice 20 on a survival check. DC 20. Okay. Okay. Easy. Good. Uh, that's a 26. Okay. You see Keld begin to falter and you're like, I know we're all tripping balls right now, but I'm <laughs> going to just lead down the path like we aren't hallucinating. I'm going to pretend I'm not hallucinating right now and lead down the path like <laughs> I'm in the woods casually. And you start pushing forward and leading the group. He's got we that need... like filter going on already. We need one success before one failure. Somebody gets to roll with it. Uh, me, and my, me and my rabbit friend could do some percepting, I mm, think. See anything, my guy? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can have the advantage and try to percept your way further, point out things that are not real, yeah. keep on the track, look out for actual threats, plenty of things to percept. So back to what she was supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, let me focus up, uh, me and my friend here. Okay. Mm -hmm. 22. Okay. You all push forward and it's almost like the fingers gripping at your mind begin to slip off the further you walk and you are out of its grip. But there is still just like this, almost like your mind is vibrating as if the effect of it is still there, but it is no longer actively causing you to hear and see what is not there and you push forward and you know that night is coming soon and you must bed down is there anything else before you hunker down or when you are hunkering down what's your game plan as you find a place to set up for the night mm -hmm. I think Nyx is going to start digging through the bag of holding. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you guys find a spot. Nick starts stuff. just looking in the bag of holding and like pulling things out and looking at them and putting them back. Mm -hmm. uh, Put up our things. Yeah, we'll Kel starts setting up everything. Uh, Russ gets comfortable and starts sort of doing like sort of like meditative breathing and like is focusing on that right mm -hmm. now. Uh, Fen, anything in particular, or is it just like, good golly, I'm glad we're stopping. <laughs> I'm just glad um, to be alive. Fen's just going to help try and find the most advantageous place to yeah. to set up camp tonight. Like, yeah, just wants to make sure this is as comfortable as it can possibly be. Yeah, you pick the least worst spot you can find, uh, and everybody is able to start setting up. Anything else in particular as you guys get comfortable before putting on your blindfolds? <laughs> you know, normal stuff. Yeah. How do you think Nyx would be able to find uh, two specific items in there? One that she has no idea what it is at all, but I'd like her to have it. Um, what are the two uh, items? Um, because to get something from the bag of holding, you do have to think it. But well, if it's like well, a vague, you could be like coin, gem, mm -hmm. like you can do things like that so, and acquire something. But the low key box, because mm -hmm. I, I have to look at that thing and puzzle uh, <laughs> a, a mystery to work on for until we mm. sleep. And two, a, a very specific necklace that's been ignored for a really long time. Okay, uh, I'm <laughs> going to I'm going to turn this to you because I trust you. Do you think at any point she would say, like, jewelry, necklace, container, box, anything like that? She knows like the box this? is in there. Okay, so box so, you can find if you're Because Nana for showed it. us the box, like, almost immediately when they were showing off Loki's leg. Here's a leg and here's a yeah. sweet box. <laughs> this box that we got that we can't open. Yeah, and then... do you think that you would be, like, jewelry? necklaces I, like she knows jewelry's in there because we went through all yeah. of it to get her lip piercing that's true i don't she's not gonna like activate it because we don't trust jewelry anymore without having people tell us what it does first but i want her to have it to be able to ask this 
when Rojan is, there, is next round. <laughs> is there a particular necklace that catches Nyx's eye? I would like access to the necklace of Forset. <laughs> okay. A necklace catches your eye. Not incredibly flashy. But it's different. It is different. It the rest mm-hmm. of the jewelry is a lot of stuff, I believe, from like Aliona's place, which is a lot more over the top and like kind of ostentatious. And this doesn't present that way. It's just a little different. <laughs> Do I sure? have the description of that necklace? No. <laughs> It's somewhere. Can I, can I find it later? Yes. Uh, but you okay. take the necklace and are like, cute, and you're welcome to put it on and not attune to it because mm-hmm. you don't know what it does. And last time you attuned to a piece of jewelry, mm-hmm. um, it killed you dead. So Exactly. So we have to ask the other people first before we yeah. attune to things. Yeah, what did random. you learn? So you put so it, it on just, and you... Yeah, just mm-hmm. see her put on necklace real quick and yeah, nothing. But... She is going to mess with this box. (laughs) All right. Nyx, you have this uh, kind of like music box size box, wooden Mm -hmm. with some uh, metal accents. It has little uh, metal feet. It has a keyhole. It is ornate and beautiful. And when Mm -hmm. you kind of turn it side to side, it's like, shush, shush, shunk, shush, shush, shunk, shush, shush, shunk is the sound it makes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Fen, you've been around when they've been playing with this. Probably, what have they tried? So I don't waste my time. It needs magic. Hmm. I hmm. tried with the lock picks and the thieves' tools and okay. it, and all of my dexterity and all of Roshan's smarts couldn't do it without magic. It needs magic to open. I'm going to try a key anyway, because it doesn't sound All like right. anyone tried a key. But, just going to grab random keys. That's fine. <laughs> Nix, you pull out a random key that you have? Mm-hmm. I will laugh so hard if this works. <laughs> so it's from Loki, right? So we got to think like him. Could be any key. Nix, you take this key and you put it in the box Mm -hmm. and you turn the key and you pull it out and the rest of the key is gone. Mm -hmm. It's as if it dissolved on contact, this other key. And it is just now the base of the key. Whatever that key opened, that's not opening anymore. (laughs) Oh, no! no. (laughs) This box eats keys. It doesn't open. It didn't open the box. Low no, key. you like, and then you're like, well, it did turn. You check it. It did not open. Wow. Well, at least I used our house key. I never use that anyway. You yeah. guys don't lock your door anyways. It's, it's not <laughs> Why like do we have a key. Keep it I don't closed. know. But I, I can't. <laughs> well. Anything else, Nix? Or is it like, that was my attempt for the day? <laughs> or would you like to try something else? No, she'll you start have probably medita- one more attempt left. I think she'd try. just start meditating on what would Loki do? Okay. <laughs> A weird, terrible place to put your mind and you go there. You're like, oh what would Loki do? And you're like, oh no. As <laughs> you just go into kind of a we spiral thinking about it. Yeah, we all know. but we're We not all know. It. We're not going to say it. We all know, but we're not going to say it. We're not going to uh, say it because we're classy. Um, anywho, uh, we're not going to say it. Night is on the horizon. As you guys can see, that last little bit of light from these little kind of spires of light diminish. And you must put on your blindfolds and rest. You get comfortable as best as you can. And you begin to rest. Fen, you do your um, meditation early instead of later to get it out of the way as quick as you can. So you kind of like try to go into this headspace of relaxing. Um, The night is as torturous as ever and as itchy as it can be. 
Um, Keld, as you lay there, you feel the soreness of your muscles and the ache of the day's tribulations. But as you are swaddled in the crevasse of this sturdy tree, <laughs> you find that sleep could come to you very easily. You sleep. think you could just immediately conk out. No problem. And Keld is out <laughs> Good <night>. immediately. <laughs> Good night, everyone. The sounds of scraping and snapping and shouts in the distance seem few and far between to you, Keld. Even though your companions are stuck listening to the sounds of the forest clear as a bell, as Keld, you are able to just fully pass out and ignore everything that's happening around you. And of course, you are able to ignore the sound of nails on skin, which you feel Russ flinch every single time. Mm. Um, but, you know, as he shifts, he kind of tries to go into positions where he can cover his ears as best as he can while he lays there and seems to be doing his best with that. Mm. Nix. It is the whip of the wind moving through the trees. And it sounds like murmurs in the distance. It is either murmuring or the wind. It is the rattling of leaves or it is a person doomed to the dark. It sounds like syllables. You swear it does. Words, gasps, you're not sure. Something on the edge of your little makeshift camp, if you'd like to call it that, murmured sounds. Shh. Soft syllables whispered in the dark. There is a long silence interspersed with snaps and cracks. And then a voice speaks directly into your ear, Nyx, burning hot lips, almost brushing against your skin, should have died. And you snap awake, Nyx, you realize, and it is darkness. You can see nothing. You are blinded. What do you do? I think she kind of jumps a little bit and like feels to see if everyone's still around her. <laughs> yeah, you um like, you kind of startle and like Russ is like like kind of like kind of like returns your like I'm also touching you or we <laughs> what do we do? Okay. <laughs> kind of returns but, like a touch. Check for Keld too, because that's the and more concerning. <laughs> Nick's hand slaps against everybody in the camp. Yeah, everybody gets checked. Everybody gets checked. And you're like, you count everybody in the camp. Slap right. check. Yeah, Please don't touch me. I'm trying to meditate. You're fine. This is the first time I've ever... Okay. <laughs> are we supposed to talk? Or are we supposed to sit here quietly? I don't remember the rules. Nobody said anything about talking. It's fine. It's fine. Dear dad, are we allowed to <laughs> sends a message. Sends hey, you the sending. Hey, question dad. Are uh, you supposed to talk at night? Used up the only sending. <laughs> yeah. And Nick, do you try to settle back in after realizing yeah, that you I, were? I think it would dreaming. take her a bit because mm -hmm. of the specifics of it, but would go back to sleep because she knows that uh, it's kind of on her to make sure that people are able to get here and back. Yeah. And having so... access to spells is important. Okay. And you sleep. Keld. Sleeping pretty soundly. Keld, the world around you seems incredibly large. But not scary. You are a child. You look up at things that seem incredibly tall. Things to you now 
seem average, normal, small even. But in this moment, you are a child looking up at things that are large and mighty. You are moving through trees. You are jumping over logs. You are humming to yourself. You are creating fantasies in your mind and you are traveling through the woods. You're creating friends to play with because sometimes everybody's a little too busy. So you've got to entertain yourself. You have to make new friends. You can make them. Why not? Just people to talk to in the woods. These friends dance with you, and they fight you with sticks, and you climb trees together. So what if you can't see them? Fun is fun. And you were having fun. And the woods to you is a comforting place. Even though it may seem big and imposing, you find so many interesting things there. There are so many amazing things in the woods. One time you find a beautiful flower, a cool stick, and you kept that in your room for a long time. <laughs> There's this old piece of leather that you made up a little story to, somebody's armor, somebody mm -hmm. cool roaming the woods, and a shiny rock brushed clean, sitting neatly on a stump. The smooth rock was presented to you, and it was beautiful. Someone, probably one of your friends in the woods, presented this to you. And they tell you where it came from. Because it's such a beautiful, smooth rock. And they tell you that it came from the lake. And you trust them. And know next time, when you have a chance You'll happily go exploring the lake. And the night passes with terrible scrapes and twists and nodding sounds. And dreams of running around the forest as a child. Good memories. And that is where we are going to stop today. Though I'm going to ask for those roles. Because I just, I want mm. them. <laughs> so... I need, let me get my notes ready. Yeah. So we're going to do our wisdom saves. So I need everybody sleeping in the woods to give me a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, sleeping in the oh, God. <laughs> 11. Okay. Nine for a net. Oh, one. wow. What? <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Kel finally Next. taking a hit. 28. 28. Jesus. And Ish. Russ got. Okay. So this first roll is for um for deciding if things are removed. This is not a you do not gain anything bad from this. This is how much is your mind able to rest. Now I need wisdom saving throws from everybody except Roshan. Okay. Nice. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. It's sexy, isn't it? That's very sexy. I'm not looking, but I believe you guys. <laughs> Mine what do we got going on? Fen? Uh, 23 with a natural 20. Okay. Keld? A 17. Nix? 27. Nana? 8. Okay. Russ. Okay. And with that, we are done for the evening. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. We love telling you guys a story. Right now, we're here over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the dice cult. But if you want to watch us 
most of the time we're over on uh, Twitch and you can come hang out with us there at the Dice Cult. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with us, we are at Backs of Gods on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to keep up with all of us, we are at the Dice Cult on Instagram and Twitter. Um, thank you again for being here. If you want some pretty dice, there is some in that box below. Um, thank you again. We appreciate it. We love telling you guys a story. We will be here same time, same place, Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will see you guys next time. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us, cultists.